Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Java Basics. Today, we're going to be talking about while loops. In other words, how do we repeat a segment of code over and over again without actually duplicating the code? Let's jump right in with an example of when we might need this kind of functionality. If you want to learn Java programming, or just programming in general, subscribe to this channel. We put out a lot of videos that range from beginner topics to more advanced programming concepts. Also, please like this video, share it with a friend, and write a comment as well. It goes a long way to help promote a channel like this. Now, let's get back to the video. Let's start with this goal. We want to write a method that will prompt the user to enter a password, and it will return true or false depending upon whether the password's correct. Let's go over to NetBeans and give this a try. So here you can see I've created a class, Learning While Loops. Here's my method, enter password. It's returning a Boolean. So the first thing we have to do is prompt the user to enter a password. Of course, we do have to import our J option pane. And now let's check to see if the password's correct. For this example, the password is going to be Apple. Now, one thing I would like to show you, because this method returns a Boolean, we have an if statement. This thing here is a Boolean. This thing will evaluate to true if the password's correct. And then we return true. This thing will evaluate to false if the password's incorrect, and it will return false. Well, there's a much shorter way of writing this code. We can delete all of this, and we could simply return the result of this dot equals method. Like so. We are returning a Boolean, and that Boolean is going to be the result of whether password equals Apple. Just a shorter way of writing it. Let's call this method now from main. And we want to set the result into a Boolean variable. And now let's print the result. So this will print true if our password's correct and false if not. Test it, let's see how it goes. Hello, should give us false. Let's run it again. Apple should give us true, perfect. What if we wanna give the person three tries? How would we do that? Well, let's go back to NetBeans and try it. So the first thing we may wanna try is calling the enter password, and instead of printing the result, let's get rid of this and let's make a decision. If the result is true, then what we'll do is we will print the password is correct. If the result is false, then what we want to do is we want to call the enter password method again. But then we have to check again to see if the result is true. And if it is, we will print. Otherwise, this is going to be our third try. If the password was, was incorrect the second time, we have to call it a third time. And let's check the result. Now, since this is the last time we're going to allow them to enter it, we're going to just print. Okay, let's give it a try. Okay, what's the password? Apple. Oh, it's correct. Perfect. Let's try it again. Let's enter the wrong password. Oh, we're prompted again. Let's enter the correct password. Looks good. Okay, and what happens if we enter the wrong password a whole bunch of times? G, G, G. Password's not correct. Perfect. The only problem with this code a little messy, right? We're duplicating a lot of code. I mean, we're asking for the password to be entered. We're printing it's correct. But if it's not correct, we're going to do the exact same code here. This is exactly the same code as above. Same thing here. It's exactly the same code as above. We don't want to duplicate code because what happens if we want to change the message? Or what happens if instead of just printing the passwords correct, we want to do something else that's maybe a hundred lines of code? We're not going to want to duplicate a hundred lines of code here, here, and here. That's crazy. Especially if we want to give them unlimited tries. Well, there's no way we can write code like that an unlimited amount of time. We have to end it at some point. 
For this, we're actually going to use a loop. Now, there are many different loops that we could use in Java. Today, the purpose of this video is to teach you how to use a while loop. Before we get into the actual Java code to make a while loop, let's go back and look at a conditional. If some condition is true, what happens? We execute these commands inside the brackets. If it's false, we jump down to here. and we continue on our merry way. A while loop is very, very similar. While some condition is true, instead of just doing these commands, we repeat the command. So let's just take a look at how this actually works. If this condition is true, we're gonna go in here, just like we did with an if statement, except the only difference is after we do all of these commands, we get to the end, instead of jumping out, we actually jump back to the top and check to see if the condition is still true. If it's still true, we're going to repeat the commands again and again and again. Eventually, this condition is going to be false. And when this condition is false, we jump down to here. Very similar to an if statement. The only difference is that in an if statement, we do the commands once. In a while statement, we do the commands over and over again until this changes to false. Now let's go back to our program and try our goal let the person keep entering the password until it's correct. We still have our method, enter password, but now what we wanna do is we wanna call enter password over and over again until the password is correct. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a Boolean, and we're gonna say when we start, the password is not correct. They have not entered the correct password yet. Now we wanna write our while loop, while, the password is not correct. What are we going to do? We're going to prompt the user to enter the password. And we need to take the result of this. We need to put this into a variable. So let's come back up to the top and declare a variable. So we take the output of whether or not the password was correct, and we're going to do an if statement. If the password is correct, what do we want to do? We want to end this loop. We want to jump out of the loop. Well, how do we jump out of the loop? Well, at the end of this loop, we're going to jump back up to here. All we need to do is change this variable from false to true. So let's take a look at what's happening here. We're starting with correct equals false. We're checking to see if correct is false. That's what the not statement says, the not operator says. If correct is false, which it is right now, we go in here. We're saying set the result variable equal to whether or not the password was correct. If the password is not correct, we're not gonna modify this variable. It's still gonna be false. We're gonna jump back up to here. We're gonna check to see if it's still false, which it is. We're gonna come back into here. We're gonna prompt them to enter the password again. Assuming they enter the right password this time, we check to see if it was correct. It is, so we change the variable to true. Then when we jump back up here, we're checking to see if correct is false. It's no longer false. Therefore, we don't go inside the while loop. We skip over it and come down to right after this bracket. Since there's no more code at the end here, we jump out of this and we are done. So we will now print. The password is correct. Let's test this out and see how it works. That's incorrect. That's incorrect. 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 Correct. And now the program ends. That's perfect. Now something important is that every while loop has to change something that's going to cause it to exit. If you don't do that, the while loop is going to run forever. This is actually called an exit condition. Now it's possible that you may want to write a program that will loop forever. Fine, then you don't use an exit condition. But in our current example, the exit condition is getting the password right. Once they get the password right, we don't want to ask them for the password again. We want to exit, and that's fine. But in the real world, typically we only allow a maximum of three tries. Then we lock their account. Let's head over to NetBeans and see how we would actually accomplish this. The first thing we're going to need is a counter. This counter is going to keep track of how many times the person entered the password. So let's create a variable. It'll start out at zero. 
And every time we enter a password, we're going to increase the variable by one. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're checking to see if the password has not been entered correctly yet. It hasn't, it starts at false. We prompt them to enter the password, add one to the number of tries and check. And if the password's wrong, we loop back up here. Is it not correct? Fine, keep going, keep going, keep going until you get it right. But we wanna change this condition. This condition will only be false once they've entered the right password, because again, we're negating it. So once this becomes true, this becomes false. But we also want to exit if the number of tries is greater than three or equal to three, actually. So we want to have an and operator and we want to send, we want to say as long as the password has not been entered correctly and the number of tries is less than three, we can still enter the password. However, if the number of tries gets to be equal to three, we want to exit the loop. But now we don't want to print that the password's correct if we've exited the loop because we've taken too many tries. Fortunately, we have this variable. This variable will only be set to true if they've entered the correct password. If the loop exits without the correct password being entered, we're never going to change this to true. Instead, the exit condition was that the number of tries has reached three. So we can actually do an if statement here. The password is correct. Then we print the passwords correct. Otherwise, and there you go. Let's try this, see how it works. Enter the password, Apple. Perfect. It's correct. We exit the loop. Try again. Hello. Let's try the second one. Correct. That worked good. Second time it was good. Let's try entering the wrong password a whole bunch of times. Oh, we've tried three times, the account's now locked, and we've exited the loop. Exactly the functionality that we want. Okay, time for some practice. Let's write a method that's gonna simulate a TV guide. In other words, use JOption pane to prompt the user for a network, keep it in lowercase just to keep it simple, Print the television shows on that network. So we'll make up a few television shows if they enter Fox, if they enter ABC, and so on. And you're going to continue this loop until they enter quit. Pause the video, see if you can get this to work, and when we come back, we'll go through the solution. Okay, let's head over to NetBeans and give this a try. First thing we're going to do is create our method. We're going to call our method. Inside this method, we're going to do three things. We're going to prompt the user to enter a network. Depending upon the network that they enter, we're going to print some TV shows. And the third thing is we're going to exit as soon as they enter the word quit. So that sounds like a while loop. The first thing we need is the network. And let's initialize that to blank. Now let's start our loop. What is the condition for continuing this loop? Well, we want to continue the loop as long as this variable is not quit. So here we're checking to see if network is not equal to quit. As long as it's not equal to quit, we'll continue to prompt them for input. And now we're going to check the network and print out the TV shows. So as you can see, I've entered four placeholders in my conditional. If the network is ABC, Fox, NBC, and HBO. I haven't entered any of the print statements yet, and that's fine, I'll do that later, because I do want to mention one other thing. If they enter an invalid network, we should handle that. We shouldn't just print nothing. Okay, so if they enter an invalid network, that will be handled by our catch all, our else, and we'll just print, I don't know any shows of that network. All right. So let's print some stuff. For ABC, let's print out a few shows.
All right, let's give this a try and see how it works. So enter a network. Let's enter something invalid. I don't know any shows to that network, and now we're prompted again. Let's enter HBO. There are your shows. Let's enter ABC. There are your shows. Let's enter NBC. There are your shows. Fox. There you go. Now let's enter quit. Ooh, it says I don't know any shows to that network. Hmm, interesting. Well, what happened? Let's take a look. If we enter the word quit, we've printed I don't know any shows to that network because quit is not handled in our if statement. So we should really take this else and change it into an else if. So if it's ABC, Fox, NBC, or HBO, it'll do one of these. Otherwise, let's make sure that it's not quit because if it is quit, we don't want to print it. HBO, ABC, and finally, quit. And as you can see, we've exited the program without printing, I don't know any shows for that network. I hope you learned something from watching this video. Please remember to subscribe and share this video with others who are learning Java programming. Thanks for watching and take care everyone.